In this week's video, I'm going to be taking you along as I take this rough walnut and turn it into a beautiful dining room table for my home. Welcome back everybody, Jason with Ben's Woodworking. And this week I'm gonna do a video that I don't typically do, and that's gonna be a build video. While I was documenting this build on Instagram, I got a lot of requests for plans and a YouTube video. And in this video, you're gonna see from start to finish the steps that I took to build this walnut dining room table. And I'm really excited to announce that this is actually the first set of plans that I have done. They will be available for sale on my website, which I will leave a link in the description down below. If you decide to buy a set of the plans, just know I greatly appreciate it and it really does help me with what I do and help support this channel. I'm not gonna waste any more of your guys' time. Let's go ahead and get into the build video. The first step that I took is I went and looked at each one of my boards to determine which face I was gonna joint first. From there, I'll joint each face of each board. Then I will take it through the thickness planer to ensure that I have a uniform thickness. And from there, I will go back to my jointer and joint one edge. Before I make any cuts, I always take the time to plan out my cuts for each piece to ensure that I am maximizing the usable material. As you can see here, I have a crack in the wood that I don't want to have in the table itself, so I just eliminate it from the process altogether. Now that I have my cuts laid out, I will then move over to the miter saw where I will cut everything to rough length. I always leave everything oversized and will cut it down after glue up. This helps ensure that I always have clean edges and also gives me a little bit of wiggle room during the build process. I then move over to the table saw where I can get everything to the desired width. On this project, I decided to start with the legs so that all the pieces are going to be laminated together to make them. The first thing that I do in the lamination process is mark all of the pieces once I have determined how I want to laminate the legs together. This is important because I want to try to match the grain as much as possible. After grouping all the pieces for the legs together, it's time to glue them up. I like to use some of these parallel clamps for this. I also like to glue all the legs together at the same time. This is easy to do as long as you remember not to put the glue on anything that you don't want to stick together. And don't ask me how I know. After I had the legs and the clamps, it was time to move on to the tabletop. Before I do that, I want to take the time to lay out the boards to see what it's going to look like and what is going to look best and that way I'm able to move the boards around as needed. I like to do this before I cut anything because I don't want to limit my options. Once at the table saw, I cut each piece individually and I myself do not worry about having all the pieces the same width. All of that was taken into consideration while I was laying out the top. After each piece was cut, I moved it all back to my assembly table to lay out all the markings. I decided to use a domino for my table, but there are various other techniques that you could use as well. Before cutting my holes for the dominoes, I also marked each board to make it easier to get everything back in the same order later. Now it was time to get the tabletop glued up. The process is pretty straightforward. I'll just let you watch as I go through it. If you want to get a more detailed explanation on how I do tabletop glue ups, I'll go ahead and leave a link to another video up in the corner now. Before I put this thing off to the side to dry, I do take a few minutes to clean up as much of the squeeze out as possible, just to save time during the sanding process. I hate this step, but I hate sanding glue off even more. After I set the tabletop to the side, I got back to work on the legs. The first thing I did is make sure that all of the legs were milled down to the final size that I needed. A few passes on the jointer, planer, and then trimming the ends at the miter saw to final length made quick work of this. I then laid out my legs to get an idea of where I wanted my tapers to be. 
I went with legs tapered on two sides, so here is where I was able to mark those so I don't get them mixed up in the process. The method that I chose for doing the tapers on the legs for my table was my jointer. If this is a technique that you would like to learn more about, I'll go ahead and link a detailed step-by-step -step instructional video up in the corner now. After my legs were done, it was time to get working on the top again. The first thing I did was trim the ends to get my table to the desired length. I did this using my track saw and a track square. Easy process and everything ended up nice and square. I then sanded up to 150 and put it aside. I won't bore you with the sanding footage. Time to cut the apron pieces. Nothing too crazy here, just ripping the four pieces that I need and then putting everything in place so I could mark and label everything the way I needed it to be. I initially planned on insetting the apron, but then I really liked the way that the flush apron looked, so I made the change on the fly and I'm really happy with how it turned out. The joinery method that I chose for assembling the base again was dominoes. After a quick dry fit, I just had to take a look at the table. So against my better judgment, I decided to move everything myself. Luckily it worked out this time at least. Time to glue up the long sides of the table. This is the first opportunity that I actually got to use these clamp extenders for the Bessie parallel clamps, and they came in so handy. If you want to avoid the need for really long clamps, these are a great item to consider. Once I had both sides done, I decided to clamp them together and mark the locations for the two stretchers that I added. This just seems like an easy way to get it done and it worked out very well. After I cut my stretchers, I then attached the two long sides together and then clamped them up and put the base off to the side so it would have time to dry. I did decide to try a new technique that I'd never done before, which was C-channels. I will be doing a step-by-step -step instructional video on the process in the near future. This was actually a fairly simple process. I do not know if it was something that I necessarily needed for this application. However, since I was not doing breadboard ends, I figured it couldn't hurt, and I just wanted to try something new, and I'm really glad that I did. I decided to add a 45 degree chamfer on the bottom side as a small detail. I think it complemented the modern look I was going for with the table. I also added these corner brackets to the legs and aprons. I don't know if they were totally needed with the domino, but again, it was something new and better to be safe than sorry. Thank you. 
Another addition that I make to any table is I like to add these leg levelers. I also recess them as you can see here so the table doesn't stick off the ground and look obvious. I'll leave a link to how I do this up in the corner now. For the finish on this table, I used what has become my favorite product to use, which is Rubio Monocoat. I used Pure for this table. My good friend Alan Neary actually came out to my shop for this step and to help me with the application. He taught me a few new techniques and things that I didn't know during the process, so a big thanks to Alan for coming out. And now after all that work, here is the finished table. I could not be happier with how it turned out and everything that I learned during the process. I really hope you guys enjoyed that overview of how I took the rough lumber from start to finish and turned it into a beautiful dining room table uh, that now sits in my dining room. And before I let you guys go, I really have to take an opportunity to thank two companies that helped out with this project. The first of those companies is Peach State Lumber in Kennesaw, Georgia, because they were nice enough to partner with me and donate the materials for this table build. So if you're anywhere in the Atlanta area, I definitely recommend going and checking out Peach State Lumber. Again, it's in Kennesaw, Georgia, and they have a remarkably good selection of hardwoods, plywoods, really anything you would need. And I would also like to say thank you to Rubio Monocoat USA and my good friend, Alan Neary. Alan actually flew down to my shop uh, to spend the afternoon with me and provided the materials uh, for the finish work on this table. Well, that's it for this week, everybody. I would love to hear what you think about the build video down in the comments section below. If you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, please leave in the comments why you didn't like it. And that's just gonna help me get better because I don't typically do this style of video. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go over there, check me out, at Ben's Woodworking, and give me a follow. And that way you'll get to see what I'm doing in the shop on a daily basis. So until next time, get back out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video.